Why do you have to keep changing things, Facebook? In this Facebook group settings tutorial, I'll walk you through each of the important parts of the settings for your Facebook group so you can make sure that your privacy is set okay, that you're not getting any surprise admins or anything else like that, which is totally freaky when it happens. Let's make sure it doesn't happen to you right now. Welcome to 5-Minute Social Media, where we help overwhelmed entrepreneurs and business owners get more results, more reach, more sales on social media with less work. And if that sounds like something you'd like in your business, wouldn't we all? Take a second, hit subscribe, click that bell. That way you'll be notified each week when we release another helpful video. My name is Jerry Potter, and in this Facebook group settings tutorial, we're going to go through all of the important settings. Public versus private, what can an admin do in your group versus what a moderator can do. Also, Facebook is testing something right now, which I cannot find the logic behind, but where it actually takes away your group from you, even if you are the admin. So I want to make sure that doesn't happen to you. So stay till the end and I'll walk through exactly what's going on with that test. And you can find timestamps for everything down there so you can skip ahead if you want, because I know your time is valuable. So this is the Facebook group for my Social Media Leads Lab program, where we help entrepreneurs get more reach and more sales every single month. And over here in the menu on the left, I'm gonna scroll down here to the settings section. And first I'm gonna click here on group settings. Now the way your Facebook group looks might look slightly different than mine, but hopefully it's close enough that you can follow along. So I'm clicking on group settings and we're gonna just start right up here at the top. So first with the setup group settings, this is where you set up your name and description. And this can be seen by people who haven't joined your group yet. So you wanna give it a name. And then of course, whatever your group is about. This prevents you from having to deal with a bunch of people requesting you to join your group when it's not even the right group for them. Next up here is new member intro. And basically the first time somebody joins your group, you can have a specific message showing up. And so you can click edit message and type whatever you want. Or if you don't want that for some reason, you can just turn it off by hitting this toggle. Again, it only shows up the first time somebody visits your group. So I'm guessing that a lot of people dismiss it before they even necessarily read it, but it doesn't hurt to write something really quick and have it there if it helped people get onboarded better into your group, whatever it happens to be about. Next up is the privacy settings for your group. And this is where a lot of people can get confused. Now the public private thing definitely gets people confused, especially since Facebook has changed it multiple times over the years. But here's the basic explanation. A public group can be seen, including all of the posts and content by anyone, even if they're not logged into Facebook. Meanwhile, a private group, you can only see the content if you are an accepted member of the group. So those are the main things to know. Now the other important part of this to know is that if your group is public, you can turn it private but once a group is made private, it cannot be made public anymore. And the reason for that is because if people are sharing in what they feel like is a private group and, and perhaps a safe space, then they don't want all of a sudden have all of the stuff people may have shared be public again. So again, you can go from public to private, but you cannot go from private to public. And that's why my social media leads lab group that I'm showing you this in says private and you can't change it back to public. Next up is visibility. And if it's visible, that means that anyone can search for it and find it. But if it's hidden, then only members and people who have been invited to the group can come to this group. Now, I usually leave all my groups visible because Facebook has always been buggy on the hidden side and people have a hard time finding them that way. So unless you're trying to do something super private, I recommend just keeping it visible and you can just be in charge of who can and can't join. Next setting is location. If you are a local group, for some reason, you can add a location. This will help more local people find your group. And next, you can add tags to your group, up to two tags to make it easier to find. Now, mine is a private group for my paid program. So I'm not looking for people to find it randomly, but you can come in and add different tags. Uh, it's not anything you want though. These are just actual topics that Facebook has already determined. So if I type in business, you can see there are two business topics that actually come up. Next section is to customize group. This first one, web address. If you haven't done this, do this right away because it makes it much easier for somebody to find your group. By default, your group will be facebook.com slash group slash some, I think it's a nine digit number maybe. Instead, you can actually have it say something. So my group here says social media leads labs and then that becomes your group's URL or website address. You can choose the theme for your group in terms of what colors show up. So for example, I can click on group color and then you can choose from their default colors or you can choose a color that comes up from your cover photo. And then you can also add a color. So if you have a brand color, for example, the teal that's in my logo up here, if I wanted that to be the color, then I can get the hex code and put that in there. Now I have to hang on, I have to look it up. I don't have it memorized, I'm not that cool. Once you have it, you can paste it in and then it can be your brand color. Now I always get a warning when I do this and say, hey, this might be difficult for some people to see. And so they give a different similar color. 
So I definitely want my group to be as accessible as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. But you can customize your group. Just to show you what this looks like before you do it on your own group, let me choose a bright color like red, hit save. And now you notice even the invite button up here is in red. The tab indicator is red. There's like a pink background here. So those are the different places that your color can show up. And down here, the accent color, it will just automatically choose an accent color that is complementary to the main color. This next setting is badges, and you can go in and you can turn off and on badges. It's really good if you want people to know who your admins and moderators are, and they'll have a little badge on there. But in general, the rest of these are just things that pop up as people share more. So for example, if somebody joins your group, they get this little new member thing that shows up for two weeks. You can turn these on or off if you want them. They kind of just run automatically in the background. Group affiliation, this basically lets you show that a specific person or organization is an admin of the group and it'll show at the bottom of the group's cover photo. So if I turn that on and then I can show here that it's affiliated with 5-Minute Social Media, which it is, I might as well leave that on, hit save. And now here at the bottom, you can say it says group by 5-Minute Social Media, Jerry Potter. Next group here is managing membership of your group. So who can join the group? You have a couple of choices. One, profiles and pages, and the other one is only profiles. So if you have profiles and pages, then when somebody requests to join your group, it'll say, hey, do you wanna join as yourself or as your business page, if they happen to have a business page? My group is all about just people connecting with people, so we don't allow business pages in there. It's just profiles that are allowed, so I have that selected there. This next one, who can approve member requests? Um, <laughs> definitely put that to only admins and moderators unless you just want the group to grow on its own. Otherwise, anyone can approve a request from their friends and it's much harder to control who's coming into your group if you're trying to control the quality of the people that are there and make sure that you're not getting a bunch of spammers and things like that. And heads up, by default, even if you already have a group, go check this setting because by default, they were turning this on so that anyone could approve new group members. And then who is pre-approved to join? So if you want, you can choose other Facebook groups. So if somebody wants to join this group and they're already in one of your other groups, they can automatically go in here. Or you can upload a file with a list of email addresses to pre-approve people. This is buggy and you know partially it's buggy and partially it's because not everybody necessarily gives you the same email address that they gave Facebook. And so this only works if it actually matches. Manage discussion. So first up, anonymous posting. This is where you can actually let people post anonymously. And so if you are looking for people to be able to ask questions and be vulnerable and things like that. So if you want the ability for people to be vulnerable and share and ask questions that they may not want to ask in a public or semi-public space, you can turn this on and then people can actually put things up anonymously. Now, you as the group admin will still be able to see who put the post up, but nobody else in the group will be able to see it. In my group, I have that turned on. Nobody has ever used it, but I don't mind if they do. Next up, who can post? So in this setting, you can say in some groups, they only want the admins to be able to post to sort of make it a uh, one-way broadcast channel. People in your group can still comment on your post, but they can't put up their own posts. In my group, anyone is allowed to post. This is how we make sure everyone's questions get answered. Next up is require post approval. And in some cases, this is a good setting to have turned on, but I'll tell you, in most groups, if this gets turned on, it totally kills the community because people feel like, well, I gotta put it up and then I gotta wait to see if I get approved. And then sometimes I get rejected. And you know, if somebody gets rejected, they're not, you know, and it was for a reason they didn't understand, they're not likely to continue to be active in that group. So I would err on the side of not having this turned on, but if you want to, you can turn it on so then all posts that go in the group have to be approved by an admin or a moderator. The next setting is potential spam. And this is basically, you can have them look for spam. If it's flagged as spam, it won't be published and it will automatically be set aside for you to review and admins and group moderators will get a notification. Same thing applies for comments. You can uncheck both of these if you don't want that turned on. This next one is if you wanna approve edits. So if you turn this on, that means if somebody puts up a post and then they go back and edit it, then you have to approve the edit. And so sometimes this is here because people got sneaky. They put up a post that was totally fine and approved in certain groups, then they came back after it got some engagement and approved and then they changed what it said. Edit post formats. This is definitely one that you're gonna to wanna to look at because inside of here, you can decide what you want people to be able to do. Now, some things, they can automatically post a video or photo, check in, tag people, things like that. But if you don't want people going live in your group, you can turn that off. You don't want people to be able to create events in your group. 
you can turn that off. So these are all, I've left them all on because I haven't had any issues and that's generally what I tend to do with settings. But if you wanna make sure people can't do certain things or they're abusing it, you can come in here and turn those off. These next two show the order that your content shows when somebody visits the group. So first up is sort posts. And by default, it'll be most relevant. If you've ever gone to a Facebook group and a post from a year and a half ago is at the top of the feed, it's because somebody commented on it recently. So it became quote, relevant again. So you can sort that by newest activity, most relevant or new posts. I've just left mine on most relevant. And then same thing for comments. You can choose to have it show the default where it shows the comments in whichever order encourages participation in the group. So this is where they will bump up comments that get lots of engagement or get more comments added. Top comments will show the most engaging comments first. Most recent will show the newest comments first. And then all comments will show in chronological order with this last setting. It says including potential spam. So choose whatever is right for your group if you have an opinion on that. Me, didn't really care. That's why I just left it on the default. So this next one is the default tab. And tabs are the things that show right under the cover photo, discussion, events, members, things like that. In my group, I only have one option, which is discussion. That's the one I'd want anyway, but you can check your group. Maybe you'll have some different ones, but this is basically what will show up as the default page when somebody first visits your group or anytime somebody comes back and visits your group. This next section, you can go through and choose different options for different things. So for example, if I click on events and I don't want it to be apparent, then people can create events. I might want to turn that off so that it doesn't necessarily show, but I do want it to show as a button at the top of my community. So I have that on and I want events to show in the featured section. So each of these have settings you can choose. You can go through and see what those are. Next up is badges. These were already in another section up above, so we're not going to go through those again. And then other features. This contributions is just another badge you can turn on and off. And then guides. This can be really helpful. This is where you can organize your posts by subject to help people, you know, learn new things or go through things in a certain order. So for example, in Leads Lab, we just have our getting started organized in guides so that people can come in and watch them in order. Add new, this is if you wanna add some other features. There's a bunch of stuff in here. I'm not gonna go through all of them in this video, but you can come in, you can see certain things for certain types of groups, like an emergency relief group, parenting, learning. These are all different things that you can add these features to your group. Seems redundant to have them in more than one place, but they do. And then these last two, if you wanna connect your group to a Facebook business page, you can do that there. And then this is where you can add apps. So apps are third party things. So Agora Pulse is the scheduling tool that I use. And so it has to be here so that my scheduling tool can publish to my group and then StreamYard I use for live streaming to the group. So this is usually will be instructed by your third party app, but this is where you can find them if you needed to remove them later. Two more things I wanna make sure you know about. One is what can an admin do versus what can a group uh, moderator do? And then the other thing is this weird thing that's happening to group admins that Facebook is testing right now. And I'm just trying to get the word out and make sure that all Facebook um, group admins are aware of this, okay? So first, admins versus moderators. So an admin is usually the group owner. Um, you only need one, it's the person that created the group and they can basically do everything, right? They can add people, remove people, delete posts, all of the different things, okay? Then you have a moderator and the moderator can help you with some of those things, but they can't do all the things. So if you click community roles here on the side, you can see your admins and all of the things that they can do. I do recommend having at least two admins so that if for some reason your Facebook account got compromised, somebody else could re-add you to it once you got your Facebook group fixed. And then moderators, they can manage members, so they can accept requests, they can manage posts and comments, but they can't change the settings and they can't like take an admin out of the group or anything like that. So basically an admin is somebody that you would add to help you run the group. I wanna make sure that all group owners are aware of this thing Facebook is testing right now. Basically if your admin, you in a lot of cases, is not active in the group, they will come out and they'll say, hey, we've noticed you haven't been very active. Do you wanna assign somebody else? They'll even suggest some of your group members. And then in testing, they're actually saying, if you don't respond within six days, we're gonna just go ahead and assign another admin. And so one of your group members that's just supposed to be your member could become the admin of your group if you're not active in there as an admin. Now I can't see this moving forward in this state because literally with a six day window, 
First of all, it's easy to miss notifications, right? But second, with a six day window, you could just be on vacation or holiday for the week, right? And then you come back and somebody else is the admin of your group and they've kicked you out. That can't be right, right? But this is happening right now. So I just wanna make sure that you are aware of it if you have groups that you are not very active in that you are the admin for. Now, if you have a Facebook business page, you're probably gonna wanna connect it to your Facebook group. So I've linked up to a tutorial that shows you exactly how to do that on the screen right now. And if you're thinking about whether a group or a page is best for for your group, I break down the key differences and strengths and weaknesses for each, and that is also linked up on the screen right now. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know this video was helpful by giving it a like or leaving a comment. You're not only supporting me, but also my two tiny superheroes at home.